present Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. doing at the great Gildersleeve's house. Since Marjorie and Bronco moved to their own little place next door, leaving just the water commissioner and his nephew, there's a, a men's club atmosphere about the house, and routines aren't so strict. Right now, Leroy is lolling at the dinner table, enjoying his second dessert. Mmm, boy, this is a keen dish. Well, you got any more peach cobbler a la mode? That's all the cobbler, Leroy, but we still got a little a la mode. Mm, no, I can't hold any more unless there's peaches on it. Well, don't tax yourself. Now, you just run on out and play and make Bertie clean up the dining room. I want to do something with us. We got to leave real pals since there's nobody in the house but us. Yeah, I think I'll ask him if he'd like to walk downtown tonight. Just browse around. Your uncle ain't going nowhere right now. He's going to be glued to the television. What's he looking at, the fights? Leroy, if you call looking at a blue-eyed girl with red hair and a lonesome voice strumming a guitar fighting, then your uncle's battling tonight. Yeah? I don't get it. Katie Lee's on television tonight. Oh, the showgirl was met last year. That's her. He found her listed in the television program, so now he's set for the evening. Oh, I'll get him to go for a walk. I don't know why he wants to watch a girl on television anyway. Hey. Hello, folks. This is Katie Lee, the Green Mountain Girl. Hello, Katie. How do you like that? He's talking to a television screen. <laughs> now, I'm going to sit right here on this log, and you sit right where you are. Don't go away now. Don't worry. I won't. Oh, for corn's sake. Oh, what a beautiful girl. There now. Are we all comfy? <laughs> I'll say. Are you sure you're comfy? Yes, thank you. Leroy. Tonight I want to sing an old favorite. Oh, let's go for a walk. Leroy, Katie Lee's on television. I know. Let's go for a walk. Remember that melody? It's called The Girl in the Woods. Oh, do I? That's the song she sang to me. And you've been in the woods ever since. <laughs> Leroy, please. Oh. When I was a young boy and drove my mother wild, I met a maiden in the woods. She said, child, look deep into my green eyes and at my autumn hair. When you're a man, you never see a girl quite. So fair. Oh, remember me. Remember me. Remember for the rest of your life. How can I forget you? How can I stand this? <laughs> I had to get some air, but I'm sure one really needs it. Suppose he thinks more of that Katie Lee than he does of me? Wonder if Mr. Peavy has any new comic books. What can I do for you this evening? You got any new comic books? To buy or to look at? Well, I've seen those you have to look at. I guess I'll have to buy one this time. And they're here behind the counter. Well, here's your dime. I'll pick out one. There we are. Where's Mr. Gildersleeve tonight? He's home watching Katie Lee on television. My, my. Is she on television? Uh -uh, I better tune her in. If you do, I want my dime back. How's that? Oh, I guess I'm just disgusted with Unc. I left him at home wounded at the television screen. Mm, you doing, Katie? Yeah. Hello, Katie. What a beautiful girl. Hey, how can I 
forget you. That bad, huh? He's gone. Well, if he acted like that just seeing her on television, what'll he do when she comes to town Friday night? She coming back to town? According to the paper, she's showing it to be due. Is it in the paper? Right here. Katie Lee, guitar and all. Gosh, I hope Unc doesn't see this. I never saw Mr. Gildersleeve so taken with a lady as he was with Katie Lee. Yeah. I remember the day she hit town. He came in here later with stars in his eyes. Feet never touched the ground. Yeah? I think he floated in through the transom. <laughs> now I'm really disgusted with Unc. Leroy, if Katie Lee was within courting distance of your uncle, there might just be wedding bells. What? I'm here to tell you. Well, I know Unc acts silly sometimes, but he wouldn't lose his head completely and get married. Speak of the devil. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Mr. Gallistine. Leroy, you here? Hi. Oh, sorry, I couldn't take a walk with you, my boy. But I couldn't leave the TV set. Peavy, guess who I saw tonight? Well, Leroy tells me you had your eye on Katie Lee. Oh, what a woman. What a character. <laughs> I better hide this paper. Peavy, you remember her. Oh, very well. Have you ever seen a girl with such beautiful big blue eyes? Such an appealing voice? Such charm? Nice guitar, too. <laughs> <laughs> It was just like her being in the parlor singing to me again. She even said goodbye to me. She did? She looked right at me. She even pointed at me. She said goodbye to you and you and you. Which you were you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'm a little excited, Petey. I'm dreaming too much. Yeah, forget her, Unc. Chances are she'll never come back to Summerfield again. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> morning paper, Leroy. I'm cutting out this picture of Katie Lee before Aunt comes down to breakfast. Don't he know she's coming to town tomorrow? I don't think so, and he won't if I can help it. I gotta protect him, Bertie. He's the only uncle I've got. Leroy, it might be good for your uncle to go off the deep end. He's been splashing around in shallow water long enough. You mean actually get married? Well, he ain't getting no younger. He's got a nice home here, nobody to fill it but you and him. Well, that's the way I like it. Gosh, if one gets married before we know it, the house will be all cluttered up again. They might even have a set of twins. <laughs> I don't trust that girl. Okay, but Mr. Gilsley's bound to find out she's coming to town. I know what I'll do. When he comes down to breakfast, I'll get him to promise to take me to the ball game tomorrow night. Then if he finds out she's coming, he can take his choice. It'll be me or her. Shh, here comes your uncle. Yeah, I better put the paper back together. Well, good morning, everybody. Morning, Mr. Gilsley. Hi, Aunt. I'll get you breakfast. Thank you, Bertie. Yeah. <laughs> are you through with the paper, Leroy? Uh, yeah, I just finished with it. Here you are. Well, thank you. Any news of importance? No, nah, it's the dullest paper I ever saw. Oh? Nothing in it, but nothing. Well, the front page looks about the same. Hey, Aunt. Yes, my boy? Has it occurred to you that we haven't done anything together for some time? What's this? We've sort of drifted apart. We aren't the pals we used to be. Leroy, we went fishing together. That was way last Saturday. <laughs> way last Saturday. But take last night. I wanted to go for a walk with you, but you turned me down. Well, Leroy, I wanted to see Katie Lee on television. And I forgive you. Now, how about taking me to the ball game tomorrow night? Well, we've been to five ball games, and Summerfield hasn't won yet. Let's see what else is going on in the way of entertainment. Well, never mind, Doug. I guess you're just trying to stall. No, Leroy. You just don't want to do anything with me. Your only little nephew. Leroy, I... Say, how'd this hole get in the paper? Hole? Well, I guess a moth wouldn't make a hole that big. <laughs> no. Besides, a moth wouldn't use scissors. What'd you cut out, Leroy? Well, now that I think of it, I did cut out a picture. What was it? Well, it, it was a picture of a musical instrument. Oh? 
A school project of some sort? Yeah, you might call it a project. What about the ball game? Oh, you know, I suppose we can go to the ball game. I... Hey, Bertie didn't bring my orange juice. I'll go for you, Unc. Yeah, thank you. I'll check the sports page to see who's pitching. Okay. Bertie, it's all set. He's taking me to the ball game. Leroy, you're going to be sorry. You're meddling in romance, and you're going to be sorry. What's there to be sorry about? It's all set. Leroy, we can't go to the ball game. What? According to the paper, Summerfield's playing in Center City. Center City? Leroy, you didn't cut enough holes in that paper. <laughs> Katie Lee of our meet again, we're going to have a woman in the house telling us what to do. I think I'll stop in to see old Judge Hooker. He's been a happy bachelor for a long time. He may be able to help me steer Uncle away from the trap he's walking into. What a doorbell. <laughs> he must keep it to frighten strangers away. Who's there? It's me, Leroy. Well, Leroy, I'm delighted to see you. It isn't often I have a caller. No, I guess not. Can I come in for a minute, Judge? Yes, you may. Thanks. Let's go out into the kitchen. I'm just preparing the dinner. Sure. I hope you'll excuse the appearance in my kitchen. Since my housekeeper left, things get a, ahead of me a little. I'll just drape a tea towel over my breakfast dishes. Sure, go ahead. I had to be in court early this morning, so I, I left them in the kitchen sink. Judge... You get along fine as a bachelor, don't you? Splendidly. Hand me the can opener, will you, Leroy? Sure. Thank you. Now, let's see. Which can shall I open? Boston beans or English peas? Do you have to have one or the other? Well, I like a choice. I can have dinner in Boston or dinner in England. <laughs> of course, this isn't all I'm having. Oh? Oh. I'm having a can of uh, chicken fricassee. I have to get a new can opener. This one's wearing out. Cans, cans, cans. wonder if that's why Uncle calls him an old goat. <laughs> I wish you'd join me for dinner, Leroy. Oh, no. No, thanks, but Bertie's expecting me. I often wonder what you and Gildy would do without Bertie. Gosh, I hadn't thought of that. Of course, you have no assurance that Bertie will always be with you. One day, she might get married. Yeah, she might. She doesn't have anything against it like you and I do. Well, I, don't, I don't oppose marriage, Leroy. You don't? No. Some of the beans always stick to the bottom of the can. Oh, balderdash. <laughs> Leroy, when you grow up, just remember that nothing can take the place of a good wife. You don't think so, huh? But here I am, prattling on, and you came to ask my advice. Now, what's on your mind, my boy? Judge, I was just thinking about Uncle Mort. You know something? He's got to get married. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. There's a phase of American frontier life that's almost forgotten in these days of glorifying the cowboy. Not every westerner rode alone across our prairies. Most of that great generation came west with their families. Community effort was responsible for much of the development of our western plains. One of the most common sites was the house or barn raising party. Several families in one area would get together and all pitch in to build a home or other needed building for a newly arrived family. We're happy to report that spirit still exists today. Not so much on our western plains, but in western Germany. There in the town of Würzburg, U.S. Army engineers volunteered time, labor, and equipment to build a much-needed playground for a children's home. The efforts of these G.I.s saved that home more than $5,000 Money so desperately needed to care for children in this town that was so heavily bombed during the war. Like the barn-raising parties when the American West was being won, there were no orders or edicts for this action. 
There was just a need of people helping other people. The American Army engineers saw the need and filled it. In doing so, they gave us all a thought to remember. We are Americans. As we go, so goes America. get back to the great Gildersleeve. Perhaps our perennial bachelor has never been so smitten with a girl as he was with Katie Lee a year ago. Well, she's coming back to town, and surprising as it sounds, Leroy is now trying to play Cupid. Hey, Bertie, where's Unc? He's around someplace. I've decided I want him to go see Katie Lee tonight. You do? And after the show, I want him to know it's okay with me if he brings her home for refreshments. Leroy, I thought you didn't even want your uncle to know she's in town. Well, that was before I saw how rough it is to be a bachelor like the judge. Living all alone, eating out of cans. My uncle deserves something better than that. But Leroy, you and your uncle ain't exactly eating out of cans. Bertie's seen to that. Yeah, but you may not always be here. You could get married, you know. Married? Leroy, for marriage, you need two things. A willing woman and a willing man. Yeah, I know. Well, here's the willing woman. Where's that willing man? <laughs> I knew it. We could lose Bertie just like that. Of course, I could get along. I'm young. What about Unc? Another year or so, and a woman won't even look at him. Come to think of it, who looks at him now? <laughs> about that baseball game you wanted to see tonight. Oh, forget it, Unc. I've been doing some thinking myself. I don't want to go to the ball game. You don't? You might not know this, Unc, but Katie Lee's in town. She's appearing at the Bijou. I know that, Leroy. You do? I saw a newspaper the malls hadn't gotten to. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, maybe I did try to keep it from you, Unc. I guess I just wanted you to be with me. Yeah, I realize that, my boy. That's why I want to take you to the ball game. No, thanks. I don't want to go to the game. We'll jump in the car and drive over to Center City. It'll be a nice evening. We might even catch a foul ball. No, I want you to stay here and see Katie Lee. No, my boy. I want to do what will make you happy. I want to do what will make you happy. Leroy, we're going to the ball game. Now be happy about it. Okay. I'll go on in one condition. What's that? I won't feel right about you taking me to the ball game until you phone Katie Lee. Oh, no. Sure. She's probably sitting in the hotel room right now asking herself, I wonder why Throckmorton doesn't call. Oh. I'd give her a ring, Hunk. You can't just let an old flame sit there and flicker. <laughs> well. Go ahead, Hunk. I suppose I should call and say hello. But that's all. You and I are going to the baseball game, Leroy. I've reserved the evening for you. Oh, sure. I'll just say, hello, Katie. How have you been? And then I'll explain I'm taking Leroy to the ball game. And I hope to see her next time she's in town. Summerfield Hotel. Will you please ring Miss Katie Lee? One moment, please. Sure, I'll be very matter-of-fact about it. I'll say, hello, Katie. Hello. Katie. Who is this? Rockmorton P. Gildersleeve. Remember me? Rockmorton? Yeah. How nice of you to call. Well, nice of you to answer. Yeah, I mean... Rockmorton, after the show, why don't you come backstage and see me? You come backstage? Yeah. I doubt if I can do that, Katie. We are coming to the show, aren't you? Well... Oh, I'd be terribly disappointed if I don't see you. You will? Well, but if you... Well, if you have something else to do. Well, there was something, but I don't remember what. <laughs> See you tonight. Wonderful. Goodbye, Throckmorton. Bye. Well, Leroy. Yeah? I did what you wanted me to do. I hope you were happy. Everything's ready and just waiting, Leroy. I'm going to be here with Katie Lee any minute. 
show's over by now. Mr. Gilstein sure was walking on there when he left here tonight. Well, I deserves to live a little. I'm glad I persuaded him to go see Katie Lee. Well, you sure surprised me, passing up a ball game tonight just so Mr. Gilsleeve could step out. Well, I got a feeling the only reason Uncle never married is on account of Marge and me. And I'm not going to stand in his way. Come on, Bertie. Okay. I want to see if you approve of what I did to the parlor. My, my, you sure went all out with the flowers. You think we should dim the lights? Well, maybe they'd like to do that themselves. Oh, let's us do it. Let's not take any chances. Okay. What's that I smell? Incense. <laughs> hey, hey, maybe I'm overdoing it. I don't want them to notice anything. I just want it to happen naturally. Well, anybody that comes in here and gets a whiff of that is bound to notice something. Hey, hey, there's the car. Uh-oh, I better scoop to the kitchen. Yeah, I'll let him in and then politely excuse myself. Well, that's a good idea. You've done all you can. Well, Leroy. <laughs> Miss Lee, you remember Leroy. Oh, yes, indeed. It's nice to see you, Leroy. It's nice to see you. Unc and I have been looking forward to it. Especially Unc. Uh, may I take your wrap, Katie? Thank you. Hey, Keen, you brought your guitar. Well, your uncle insisted. You bet. I'd like to hear some more songs. Uh, not that I didn't get my money's worth of the show, but <laughs> uh, come into the parlor, Katie. Oh, what lovely flowers. Flowers? Oh, yes. I didn't notice them before I left. <laughs> Leroy, have you been burning rubber? <laughs> rubber? Oh, oh, no. Maybe some of the flowers are a little strong. <laughs> well, I'll be going up to bed now. Leaving you two alone. Good night, Leroy. Good night. I'll stop up here on the landing. I don't want to eavesdrop, but heck, after going to all that trouble, I want to be sure it works. Why don't you take that chair, Katie? Oh, fine. I'll sit over here. Why don't they sit on the couch? Oh, this is so comfortable. Fine show tonight, Katie. Thank you. There's something about that voice of yours. Puts me under a spell. Oh, Strathmore. Yes, sir. I'd like to hear it every day the rest of my life. Ah, now he's cooking. <laughs> you mind if I light a cigar? Not at all. Oh, for corn's sake. How can he get romantic smoking a cigar? Well, I better go down and give him a push. Excuse me! Uh, Leroy! I thought you'd gone to bed. Well, I, I just remembered. I put logs in the fireplace and forgot to light them for you. Well, I wouldn't bother, Leroy. I can only be here for a little while. Yeah, I know. We don't need a fire, my boy. The heck you don't. It's pretty chilly in here, if you ask me. Well, Leroy... Come on, you two. Sit here in front of the fire. Miss Lee, wouldn't you like to live in a nice home like this? Really settle down. Maybe get married instead of traveling. Oh? Uh, Leroy, don't you think you're overdoing it a little? <laughs> overdoing what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Do you, Miss Lee? Well, I, uh, why don't we sit by the fire, Throckmorton? It is a good idea. <laughs> no use wasting it, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. I was just thinking. I, I have a song I'd like to for you to hear. A song? Oh, great. Yeah. Well, I'll be going up to bed now. Oh, wait a minute, Leroy. I want you to hear this, too. You do? You really want Leroy to stay, Kate? Mm-hmm. Well... Shh, shh. My daddy's up in heaven My mother's by his side And I was born to sing my song a Roman far and wide And it looks like I'm never gonna cease my wandering What a sad, beautiful song I once had a cabin upon a high hill 
But something kept calling me. I'm a wanderer still, and it looks like I'm always gonna be a wanderer. Gosh, I hadn't thought of that. Sometimes folks get lonely, and this shouldn't be. But if a song does for them, what a song does for me, then it looks like I'm never gonna cease my wandering, my What did you think, Leroy? I think I'll go to bed. <laughs> You're all right, my boy. It's time your light was out. I'll put out the incense, too. Won't do any good tonight. <laughs> Say, Einstein... You think you know your mathematics? I bet you don't. If you divide 30 by one half and then add 10, what's your answer? You got it? Well, if you don't, better go Yusafi. For Yusafi can offer you courses in anything from elementary arithmetic to solid geometry. Or, if you really like playing with problems, maybe some trigonometry. No matter what your field, Yusafi can probably supply a course that can help you. And before you take off your shoes to count on your toes, I'll answer that mathematical muddle for you. If you divide 30 by one half and then add 10, your answer is 70. Okay, you can put your shoes on again. Anyone for you, Safi? <laughs> Nothing like a free life, my boy. From now on, it'll be just you and me. Oh, boy, huh? Say, who's that little redhead down in the second row? Hey, that's a woman. Isn't that Amy Dutcher? You, Amy. Oh, for corn's sake. Oh, I know, I know. I'm sure that's Amy. Go, oh, Amy. Oh, Paul's coming out here. Let's get it. Right, George, she's alone, too. Oh, go away. Go, Amy. Listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve.